City is expanding its use of drones over the 7 and J lines in order to prevent subway surfing. The drones, they allow police to see when teens are subway surfing so cops can stop them and detain them. The Education Department is also spreading anti-subway surfing messages as part of their public awareness campaign. The new efforts comes as six young people have been killed in subway surfing incidents so far this year. They're asking for parents to please stay on top of yeah, this. Yeah, parents have to get involved. All right, everyone, four days to go until Election Day. We know you're aware of this. Both candidates swept through states in the West trying to shore up their bases and convince those undecided voters. Yeah, but it's not just the presidency that will be decided on Tuesday. The balance of power in Washington is also at stake. Yeah, joining us now with more is ABC News senior reporter Catherine Falders. Catherine, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Yeah, Catherine, really appreciate your time. As you know, we are closing in on Election Day. What is the latest on the state of the race between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump? What are the issues that each candidate is focusing on most heavily right now as they campaign into that final stretch? Yeah, I know it's really hard to believe here that we actually have four days until uh, voters will head to the polls, November 5th on Tuesday. So, uh, look, they are both candidates, Harris and Trump, are focusing on those swing states, those battleground states that will be all just so important uh, to the race. Of course, on Tuesday, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, we talk a lot about uh, Nevada and Arizona, where you saw um, both of the candidates campaigning yesterday. So, look, they're focusing on different issues, but also the same issues in a way. Trump, uh, we all have listened to his speeches uh, so many times now. Uh, he understands, obviously, he believes that immigration and this uh, mass deportation policy that, that he's talking about, should he come back to the White House, that he believes that that resonates with uh, his base, that that could potentially draw over um, some swing votes, even though he hasn't really provided any specifics on how uh, he would do that. But he has focused uh, a lot on that. Um, he focuses also on the economy. Uh, again, like, hasn't laid out um, a huge amount of proposals proposals there, but we do know that Trump is more popular in the polls uh, with the economy than Harris is. Now, on the Harris side, of course, she understands that. She understands she has to make up that gap in the polling, uh, particularly as it relates to the economy. That's one of the most important issues that voters uh, will go to the polls on. She has been able uh, to make up some of that gap. Of course, she hasn't had enough time or much time to do that, uh, but I think we will hear her uh, focusing more uh, on the economy, especially in the wake of some of the jobs reports that have come out. So that's that's what the focus uh, will likely be, and we'll see uh, what both of them say in the coming days. Yeah, we certainly will. We're also focused on the down ballot, right? Uh, the Republicans, they control the House. Uh, the Senate's controlled by uh, the majority share with, with the Democrats here. As you take a look at some of the numbers there on your screen, what are some of the races you're watching? I would imagine Texas, Missouri. There's a lot of key states uh, that are, are voting for their senators in this upcoming race. Yeah, exactly. You nailed it. I think there's a fascinating race in, in Texas, that one between uh, the sitting Senator uh, Ted Cruz and Colin Allred. That, the polling is really, really close there. Cruz uh, narrowly won uh, that before, and that is that race. That race in particular it is a race that uh, many in the Senate are watching because, as you mentioned, the balance of power in Washington here, it, it's likely that the Senate could flip to Republican. Now, if that race in Texas, of course, if the Democrat there, if Colin Allred wins, then it puts the Senate pretty much back in play uh, for Democrats keeping uh, control over the Senate. So I know at least from talking to sources behind the scenes that uh, that race in particular in Texas is one that they're really keeping a close eye on. Let's bring it back local. Uh, I want to talk about the New York City metro area now. We know that several key races could impact the balance of power in Congress. So can you give us kind of an overview of the competitive races and, and why it's so important this year, why they are? Yeah, this is actually uh, fascinating races going on uh, in your state in particular, uh, New York 4, New York 19, New York 17. Uh, why is that? It's because in those districts, those uh, are districts that Biden won in 2020, but you have Republicans there who are trying to hang on to their seat uh, in, in that state, so in New York. So look, this is also one we talk about uh, leadership in Washington closely watching. We do know that Republican leadership in Washington is closely watching uh, those three districts uh, in New York because look, it's so narrowly divided that it's really important, at least from Republicans' perspectives, for them to hold on to those seats. So we know uh, in those three districts, especially in New York, those are uh, going to be fascinating to watch and, frankly, could be difference makers. They certainly can be. We know already, what, 65 million people have voted so yeah. far in early voting, so mm -hmm. a lot to see there. So much at stake in this election on so yeah. many levels. Thank you so much, Catherine.
All right, still to come here on Eyewitness News. We have so much more to talk about this morning, including we're closing in on one of the most exciting days of the year, the TCS New York City Marathon. We will talk to a member of the New York Roadrunners about the racers and spectators they can expect this year. And Lena has best bets for November. Yeah, it is that time already. So Halloween is over. We've got Thanksgiving, Black Friday, and Christmas straight ahead. What to buy and what not to buy in November. Best bets coming up.